I hope that's the bus driver because that's the only guy who's ever allowed to sleep at a game. He does all the hard work driving after all. Number five, Torrington versus Cody. This game being played in Lander. First quarter, Torrington wearing the maroon. Cam Kelly will draw the defense in and then dish the assist to Josh Ring, who will ring up two points as his team would jump out to an early 4-0 lead. Then Cody would get their offense going. Brandon Hinsey would get himself into a jam, but Ryan Niders would come in from behind to bail him out and get the bucket for the Bronx, who have now jumped out to a 6-4 advantage. Niders was taking charge early on, and here he comes with some defense. Picks off the pass, and there's no one between him and the hoop on the right side of the court. That would cap off a 10-zip run for the Bronx, and they're on top by a score of 10-4, good buddy. Touring to Woodrick Group, and they were determined not to let this play fall apart. Nick Prugia lost it. Garrett Durr would save it, and Prugia would get the finish. Yes, they practice plays like that. The Trailblazers still trail 10-6. The Bronx at times were a bit quicker. Case in point. Cap McClure takes the inside lob, and by the time the defense realized it, it was too late. That would push the score up to 12 to 8. The opposition would find their own path to the hoop. Here's Kelly on the drive, and he's not going to be denied on this one. Just wait until the fourth quarter. You'll see a lot more from him. His team is still down 12 to 10. The defending 3 8 chance would hang around and make a few moves of their own. This is Alex McAnally going around one defender, gets the blocking call and the bucket. He'll take that any day. And this game was knotted up at 12 points apiece after the first eight minutes. Second quarter, Cody would start unleashing their main scoring threat. That would be Dan Dunn, a senior. He'd find a lane to the hoop and go right through it, and the rest would give him one more for his efforts. The three-point play would push the score up to 15-12. The Trailblazers would counter with some fast passing. They would find McAnally coming in the back door, and he'll let himself in for two more points, and that would put his team down one with a score at 15-14. Things went back and forth for just about the entire quarter, so we're going to skip a few highlights here and there. This is Blake Henze, a freshman canning a short-range jumper to put the Bronx up 19-15. You'll see him again later making an important shot. Then Dunn would make another move on the opposition. He'll just barely put enough on this lay-in try, and the ball just manages to drop in for two. Cody's still up 21-17. Back comes Torrington. First they had to get out of a jam, then watch the finish by Kelly. Pump fake, lays it up and in on the drive. That is what you got to do sometimes. Things are all even at 25 all. Moving ahead, the Bronx are down two, but they would take care of the problem quickly. McClure scores off the inbounds and the foul. That would give a squad the momentum back as they led 28-27 going into the locker room. Third quarter, not much happened. It took a long time before anyone scored. Dunn breaks a four-minute drought with a three, and that was something. Cody's up 31-27. Then Nick Schmidt will dish an assist to Dunn, who decides to take it a little closer for another basket. Scoring-wise, that was it. The Trailblazers put up a zero on the score sheet, but thankfully they were only down 33-27 going into the final eight minutes. Fourth quarter, what did not happen in the third did happen here. Durr scores on the baseline drive for Torrington and gets the whistle. That would take care of his team's scoring problem, but they still trail 35-29. I told you earlier that we would see Kelly a lot in this quarter. He's in the corner doing what bad boys do, causing trouble. That was a sign of things to come. The Trailblazers are still down 38-32. The Bronx knew that something was up, and they had to put a stop to it. Schmidt is open on the far side behind the line, and he found nothing but the bottom of the net. That opened up some breathing room. It's 41-32, but it did not stay that way for long. Kelly, same spot for three, count it. He was heating up, and his team now trails 41-35. Then the defense would come through. Matt Richardson steps in front of that pass, and he's taking it back for two. They were getting closer, down 41-37. Cody got a couple of free throws to go back up by six. Then Kelly decided he was going to count to three, and then he was going to move the ball. The senior was on fire from behind the arc, and he's got his team within striking distance. Torrington only down 43-40. They were not done. Let's get Blake Wisroth in on the act. He would get the ball up over and in for two points. The senior knew what he had to do. It's now a one-point contest, 43-42. And the Bronx knew they had to stop the bleeding quickly before their nine-point lead evaporated. Brandon Hensey's quick to score for his team to push the lead back up to three. It's 45-42 at this point. We now have less than one minute to go. Ring is going right by a defender and ring his bell for two points. The defending 3A chance are right back in this one, down 45 to 44. Two more free throws for Cody would push the lead back up to three. So who would get the ball? Of course, Kelly. Three more. 20 points on the game, and the scoreboard is dead even at 47-47. 
This game's getting good. Now we're down to the last possession. Bronc ball, they need anything to avoid overtime. Brandon Hensey's gonna try to take matters into his own hands. Off balance, no good. Tip out to Blake Hensey, who just throws it up and banks it in with one second left. It was actually two points, but they gave him three. In the end, it did not matter as long as the shot went in. Cody botched a nine point lead, but recovered in time to win it in the end, 50 to 47.